Howdy, this is Daniel with Pwn CNC, and I'm here to show you how to install our various wiring components in order to get our uh, 100 millimeter rotary, uh, the fifth axis, onto my Onefinity Elite machine. Let's, uh, let's dig into it, shall we? What we have here is we've got our rotary. We've got the cable all, all attached. Um, that's the way it will come. It's got two ends to it. One side is for power. Goes, usually goes into our power box if you've got our CNC machine. The other connector is the uh, six pin connector that goes into the controller. This can be peeled back if you need to. There's a couple of places that we put heat shrink so that it won't unfurl past those two points. This wire is designed to be peeled apart to go exactly where you need it to go. Okay, the next thing you will, uh, you should be receiving is the inlet cable. This is our six pin inlet cable, which allows you to plug in the encoder into the controller. This can be attached in a couple of ways. This is a panel connector. If you have our spindle kit or spindle system, you've probably received this little snap-in connector. If you have a 3D printer, we do have this file free on our website. If you don't have that and you've upgraded to our inlets panel, that is a very handy addition to your controller. It allows you to add up to, I believe, 24 different inlets for a ton of the accessories that we have available, that we've designed and made available for, for everybody using the Masso controller specifically. That includes all Onefinity Elite. The next thing you will need is, because this power connector is designed for our power box on our conversion kits and our machines, you'll need a little adapter that converts the Onefinity's Molex into our uh, aircraft connector, which allows you to just plug in plug in our power and provide power to your rotary. Let's dig into the installation. Right. We're going to start with inlets cable. This guy has, um, I believe this is about 24 inches or something like that, um, just long enough to reach in from several of these spots here on the side. This is our inlets panel, and we've got uh, a ton of uh, 12 millimeter holes with punch outs on the side that we can install this connector onto. I'm going to install it here on the left side if I were facing the controller. I'm going to control it right here on the left side. So we'll need to take that apart. If you don't have this inlets panel and you're just using their stock connector um, without this cover here, this is where you would install this uh, inlet, feed the wires through um, after pulling the, uh, the nut off, feed the wires through, attach it right there, tighten that nut back down, and then you can snap this back into place and then these wires will run right through the uh, controller down and up into where we need it. We'll show that part later. Now, as you can see, we've got our inlets. I don't have very many inlets installed into this system yet. And this snapped in cover will basically snap in right there if you do not have the inlets panel. So the wires, we're gonna first pull off our nut there. And I don't really want to use the uh, cover. So I'm gonna pull this little rubber cover. I'm gonna dispose of that, don't need that. We'll take a needle nose pliers. I'm gonna stick it right here. Um, right here on the corner. So I'm going to kind of pinch that corner, push that tab in and allow me to remove it. And I can dispose of that as well. Then I will feed my wires through that. Keep the wires together and where to put the nut? There it is. And I'll take the nut Get it on there and gonna just kind of tighten it up. Now I'm gonna take this little red dot and I wanna put it upward or outward so it's super easy to see from the backside. And tighten that down. There we go, it's all installed. Now I'm gonna take, I've already removed the five, uh, the four screws from the front so that I can open up the door here, but I'm gonna be real careful there. I'm going to shove all this stuff. Oh, I do wanna make note the machine is off, so there's no power going to anything, which is very important. I'm gonna shove it right down into this section right here. 
Okay, now that we got our wire all ready, now we can go ahead and put everything back together. Now I'm going to take the whole thing, put it back into position. Before we jump into the power, let's take a look, let's fix this wiring up right okay, here. Okay, for right this now. stage, we are going to need a small um, flathead screwdriver, and I just need to kind of pull the wires that kind of got shoved in there. So we're going to try to get that as clean as we can. We've got our six wires here, and we're going to be wiring these up into the A-axis. The A-axis is the rotary. We've got, I'm going to pull the little Phoenix connector off from there. We've got our X, Y, Z, and then B is actually mirrored from A. That's, so these two are kind of the two Ys. And then of course the X and the Z. The A axis is our rotary, and we're gonna use these, these wires right here. Now specifically, we're gonna be pulling aside yellow, white, green, and orange wires. Your machine is probably a production machine. As I've mentioned previously, this is, a pro, this is the very first elite machine. Uh, at least I was told this was the very first machine. Um, so a lot of the wires, for example, I did not even have a yellow, orange, gray, and black wire inlet from their Molex. I don't even have that on my machine. Your machine probably has the, the yellow, orange, gray, and wire plugged into that. We're gonna basically disconnect that. We're gonna dis uh, unscrew all of the terminals on the A axis, remove that. I would suggest taping it off. It's not that big of a deal, but just in case, just go ahead and tape that off with some painter's tape or some electrical tape, something similar to what I did with the blue wire here. And then we're gonna take our yellow, white, green, and then orange. So in that order. So we're gonna do the yellow. Now, these are uh, cut extra long on purpose. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut them, basically cut a third of it off. We want these uh, ferrules to be in the connector, but we don't wanna have any of the ferrules, uh, the, the metal part exposed. So we're gonna just trim those down just a tiny bit. That way when we set them into the Phoenix connector, the plastic part is well seated into it. This will be similar to all the other wires that are attached because that is a uh, standard practice. <laughs> it's better to pull the connector off so that you're not damaging or wiggling or um, causing any issues that, that might happen later on down the road with this ter terminal. So pull the connector off, install the wires, then plug the whole thing in. All right, now we've got it all together. Um, I would suggest if you happen to have it, go ahead and label this, uh, the rotary or something like that. Just kind of wind the wires around so that it stays out of your way. Then you can just plug it right in there. Now, the black and the red wires, um, they can be used. You don't have to use them. One is for the alarm. The other one, it, well, actually, you have to use one of them. <laughs> I will state that. You have to use one of them, but you don't have to use them all. Um, the black wire, I believe, is the alarm. The red wire is the enable. So the enable wire is what we're going to be focusing on. You can go ahead and tape off um, the alarm wire. Um, you will be actively using the rotary, so the alarm um, unmonitored or whatnot isn't really that terribly important. We can wire that up later, um, but for now, you could just... Uh, kind of hide it, um, tape it off, whatnot, just keep that out of the way. Now, the, uh, the red wire, we're basically gonna need to plug it into this bundle of uh, wires right here. This is our enable wire. So you'll notice this green bundle right here, I believe is the one that goes to all of the uh, access inlets. This connector right here, we can unscrew Unscrew the big bundle of green wires there and then we can shove our wire in there with it. If we were to do it properly, here's a short little stub wire. We've got our three pin Wagyu connector. I'm going to plug the, uh, the stub wire in there. We're going to take our rotary wire. We're going to put that into the Wagyu connector and then we're going to take their bundle of wires, their green bundle there feed it into the third port, tighten that down, and then we can take the stub wire, put it into this terminal button, this little piece here, and tighten that down. So now we've got that section done, let's take a look at our power. 
And down here on the bottom, we've got our power box. Now, this is a prototype box. I still have a little hole for the e-stop. Um, so this may not be a production. It may not look exactly like it, but you should find a spare um, ro uh, Molex, white Molex connector. And that's exactly where this guy goes into. Just plug that in right there. Here is our panel connector or our power connector. Plug that in, ready to go. And let's plug it into the machine. The six pin cable, and we're gonna plug that right in there. And you find the little red dot on there. There it goes. And get that plugged right in there. And now we're ready to uh, start playing with our rotary. Here I've got the rotary. I've got the, uh, ends, the head stock, the tail stock, I've got one of our attachment, our head, our stock attachments here. Um, we do have a variety of tail stock heads available for, in order to secure your stock in different ways. It's definitely a clamping style situation where there may be lots of different options available to you. We've got additional heads on the website. We've also found in some of our car, uh, some of our rotary carves, we've actually had to design special 3D components for the tail so that it holds it correctly um, so that our rotary can do its job without in, um, and properly hold the stock uh, securely. But needless to say, we're here to get this up and running. We've got it all plugged up. We've got the wires into the back of the machine, into the back of the power box. So now our rotary should have a little green light there um, in order to see and confirm that it is operational. Now we need to go into the software and configure the controller to know how the how to operate the rotary with regards to the A plus and the A minus buttons on our jog screen there. So let's uh, let's zoom in on that. Go into setup and down here under the A axis, double tap that. This will give you the settings that you're going to be configuring. And we have these in the KB and I'll link to the KB in the description. We've got our uh, first at first and foremost, we've got the little checkbox down at the bottom. It's set to angular access. That will automatically switch the degrees per revolution to 360, which is standard. Our motors are configured with 60,000 pulses per revolution. So enter 60,000 into that number right there. Next, we've got our feed rate. We've set that up to uh, 10,000 degrees per minute. Next, we've got acceleration to set that to 200 degrees per second. Travel minimum is a uh, negative 7,200 degrees, while the travel maximum is 7,200 positive uh, degrees. The backlash, we've got that set to zero. And of course, we're not inverting the axis. Hit save. Then you can go back to the jog screen. Now, I do want to go over some of the basics of our particular rotary system. And in a later video, I'll actually show a car of the whole nine yards and that sort of thing. But this is more of a general installation and a quick little overview on the rotary. So our rotary, we chose 100 millimeter um, heads so that it's as large as possible. And it's mounted in a way, or it's mountable in a way that allows you to install it in a variety of locations. Um, there's plenty of uh, clamping options. This is a standard off the shelf rotary system that we basically wired up and got all the communications working and whatnot. Every kit will come with your, your head stock, your tail stock, a pointy tail stock head. And then of course the wrench with the spring on it. I don't like the spring. I usually pull that off, but that will allow you to um, control mounting position. This is how you mount your stock. So usually you'll have a little hold in your stock. You can mount it right here and then you can turn the, uh, rotate this to expand or contract the jaws. Um, there are jaws for, uh, for inside, inside holes and there are jaws for outside holes. That's what these spare jaws are. Once you've got your, uh, your stock in position and is locked into place, you can put that away. Um, again, the additional heads here, we've got our, uh, our, the pointy head, um, actually this is the, this is the stock head. Here is a concave head that we've got available. We've got the ER11 head here, which will, it's basically an ER11 collet. Um, it's got the standard wrenches will work with this and give you a collet there. You can use any ER11 accessory. That is basically it. You wanna mount these, the head stock and the tail stock to be in line. So whatever, however you mount them up, you need to make sure that you do your proper measurements and make sure that this guy is mounted in the right orientation and make sure this is perfectly in line. 
Okay, so hopefully that made a lot more sense for anybody who's buying our rotaries. We're here to help. Definitely reach out to us at support at potencnc.com. We answer those um, pretty much all week on the weekends and anything to help you guys out. The machine, plugging it into the uh, 150 machine is not difficult. You've got your inlet, you've got to install. You've got the, uh, the power adapter that switches from their Molex connector over to our aircraft connector. And then of course, you've just got your mounting situation and how you're gonna mount your stock. But that's a whole video's worth of content right there is how to use the rotary and how to uh, your, your mounting stock options. Um, that's a, a big topic right there. So yeah, if you have any additional questions, just let us know, answer down or ask down below. We're happy to answer on the, on the video here. Don't just own your CNC, dominate it.